The question is that this House do now adjourn. Elliot Colburn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I begin by thanking the Speaker's Office for granting me this adjournment debate this evening. Uh, tonight will be uh, a difficult speech because I, like 50,000 other couples today, have found out cruelly, in my opinion, that their wedding is unlikely to be going ahead within the next four weeks. But I will soldier on regardless. Uh, Mr. Spe Mr Deputy Speaker, Castle and Wallington is lucky to be statistically one of the lowest crime areas in London, but thanks to the efforts of our fantastic metropolitan police officers, it still suffers, uh, but it still suffers at the hands of criminals, I should say. Uh, today I want to touch on a couple of the most challenging and worrying problems facing Castle and Wallington residents when it comes to crime, and that is antisocial behaviour, particularly crime and antisocial behaviour involving the use of or targeting of a vehicle. The pandemic has led to a sharp decline in crime overall in the London borough of Sutton, but these types of crimes and antisocial behaviour have seen a worrying increase. Indeed, there was an increase in antisocial behaviour in April last year of over 230% when we first went into lockdown. Now, I've been in regular contact with our excellent local borough commander, and it is clear that the police are doing what they can but the police need supporting either through partner organisations that need to do their part or by new rules or powers to make their job easier. And there are two forms in particular that I want to raise today. The first being the theft of catalytic converters. Catalytic converters are located on the underside of cars and they remove harmful pollutant gases. However, the precious metals which enable them to do this are very valuable, some of which three times the price of gold. A thief can take a catalytic converter from a car in a matter of minutes, even as quickly as 30 seconds in some cases, often using a pipe cutter or a similar tool simply to cut the converter from the exhaust pipe. Last year saw a rise of nearly 50% of catalytic converter thefts in London alone, and this has been for two primary reasons. One is the ease of which that these crimes can take place, and two, the huge financial potential for those who are successful. The perpetrators have become more and more violent in their desperation to commit these crimes, with many stories that have been reported to me of residents being barred into their own homes, chased or even attacked with blunt instruments, such as my constituent Saffron in Beddington. Now, there has been some good news in relation to tackling these crimes, and I want to pay tribute to the Metropolitan Police and the British Transport Police in their efforts to try and tackle this issue. The police set up Operation Basswood to tackle the rise in catalytic converter thefts. Collating evidence from thefts across London and parts of the home counties like Essex, the police were able to deduce that the overwhelming majority of these crimes being committed came from one group of people based in Hackney. And on Tuesday the 23rd of March this year, hundreds of officers were deployed to execute simultaneous warrants in Hackney and in Essex. On the day itself, there were four arrests and there have been a subsequent seven arrests made. Over £60,000 were seized, multiple vehicles which were stolen or on false plates, various quantities of drugs, tools used to commit these thefts, and 33 converters were recovered. This was the very first police raid of its kind, and I'm pleased to report that it has been successful, with a 66% reduction since the 23rd of March, including in Carshorton and Wallington. This hit day was followed by a further catalytic converter week of action by the British Transport Police in mid-April. This saw 244 offences identified, 664 vehicles stopped, 926 sites visited, 1,610 vehicles forensically marked, 1,037 stolen catalytic converters recovered, and 56 arrests made. However, whilst these operations have thankfully been successful, the fact still remains that without changes, this crime is still very easy to commit and the police are in a really difficult situation to track down the perpetrators or return stolen parts. The difficulty in policing this comes down to these basic facts, that catalytic converters are easy to steal and almost impossible to trace back to their owners. That's why I'm joining with local police in calling for changes to help them tackle this crime. Firstly, we need to look as far back as vehicle production, ensuring that catalytic converters cannot be so easily accessed by potential thieves, but also including identifiable markings on each catalytic converter so that a re recovered catalytic converter can be traced back to the vehicle it was stolen from, therefore allowing for more successful convictions in individual cases. However, we must also do more 
to tackle the dodgy scrap metal dealers that these thieves rely on to not ask any questions when selling on the metals. And this frankly goes for all types of crime which seek to make money through this way. I would agree with the police that, when these, that these dealers must keep a register of their customers or even go as far as asking a regulator, perhaps the Environment Agency, to licence or certify who can handle these precious metals. Again, making it easier to trace criminals or to shut down dodgy scrap metal operations covering up for the criminals who use them. Whilst police operations have seen a reduction in catalytic converter thefts for now, it is likely to rise again unless we get on the front foot and make life more difficult for these criminals. However, it's to the antisocial anti use of vehicles more widely that I want to move on to next. We've seen scenes from across the country, particularly in London, which sadly have also manifested themselves in Carshalton and Wallington, of people using vehicles, particularly motorbikes, mopeds and quad bikes, to ride antisocially in parks, open spaces, pavements, high streets and much more. In my constituency, it's particularly the residents of Roundshaw and South Beddington who have been impacted by this. With the use anti... Absolutely, I'd love to give way. Thank you for, for bringing this forward. I spoke to him beforehand as well. Uh, back in my constituency of Strangford, one of the issues has been the advertising of these events, for instance, on social media. Uh, and, the, and there is, I believe, a, a role for the police to, to do in releasing it. So does the member not agree that it's imperative that communities are able to have a source of redress for those who sit in public car parks uh, near to housing developments in the early hours of the morning with their altered vehicles, whatever they may be, uh, waking children with every acceleration and leaving people at their wits end? It's time that the legislation was here to make it, to stop it, really. Thank you. Well, it's an honour to be intervened on by the member for Strangford. He wasn't here during my very first adjournment debate, and I felt at a loss. So I'm, I'm happy that he's here, happy that he's here now. But I completely agree with everything he has said. And it is true that these perpetrators, whilst the crime or the antisocial behaviour itself might seem minuscule to some, constant abuse of the vehicles in this way can cause absolute misery for local communities. I'd be delighted to give. I, uh, I'm grateful for the Honourable Member for Castleton Wellington for giving way and, and I'm really sorry to hear about the delay to his wedding. Um, he is raising a number of issues that I know my constituents in Pontypridd and Taffili um, are faced with on a daily basis. The key issue that I'm hearing about is that residents often feel harassed or intimidated by these car modifications and these cars backfiring, these loud bangs that literally sound like a shotgun going off can be utterly terrifying. But these people feel unable to report it um, and because what well, essentially this is antisocial behaviour and they're unable to report this to the police. So would the Honourable Member agree that central to tackling these issues is how we improve how police support services are communicated to residents across the UK so that they feel confident in reporting these instances? All right. I'm grateful to the Member for Pontypridd and I completely agree um, with the point that she makes about reporting and I will go on to reporting later in my speech. Uh, but one uh, thing that I have found very, very helpful that the Metropolitan Police has in, has in place is an online report system which does not require residents to phone 999 or even 101 in order to report a crime. And I've found it much, much easier to persuade residents to report more regularly through this um, online. So they don't feel like they're harassing the police, they don't feel as if they're taking up too much of their time, or they don't feel like they're being a burden in reporting something that they might think is small, but actually is causing them real grief. So I wonder if the Minister could um, address in her closing remarks anything we can do to use this example from the Metropolitan Police across other police forces. I do think that that has been a really useful tool. But of course, there's always more to do. Uh, the, I was talking about, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I was talking about the impact on Roundshaw uh, Downs residents, the re residents who live now, near Roundshaw Downs, I should say. And uh, it's impacted me myself because I regularly use the Downs to walk my two dogs, Willow and Lola. Um, but I've become more and more apprehensive about doing so. Uh, and a concern that I know is also shared by the Sutton Common Rovers Football Club, who are based on that site. Uh, this isn't a new issue. It's been going on since before I was elected, residents tell me. But lockdown has incredibly exacerbated the problem. Uh, and it's clearly gone way beyond now a small band of young people looking for a quick thrill. This has clearly become something more organised. Uh, and perhaps this would explain why. Because Roundshaw Downs is a 52.7 hectare site of metropolitan importance for nature conservation and nature reserve, based on the site of the old Croydon Airport and some of the old airport remains there today. It is the largest area of unimproved 
chalk grassland in the borough, and as such, it provides an extremely valuable nature conservation resource for insects, birds, and wildflowers. My partner, Jen, and I particularly enjoy the cows that are at the southern end of the downs, but also makes it very, very attractive for those who want to use vehicles in an antisocial way. And I just want to talk through some of the reports that I've received from residents about the impact this has had on them. I've had residents say to me, and I quote, that they're too frightened to walk in the area. The noise has left some to say, it feels like we are living next to a racetrack. The destruction of local environment and habitats, including things like breeding pheasants and nesting skylarks, which by the way are a red list species of protection in the area where the activity has been occurring, as well as other illicit activities such as littering and drug use. There's been serious safety concerns on, about use of the downs now as well. One resident tells me that they have experienced verbal abuse and threats for simply walking on the public pathway. And there has also sadly been at least one appalling incident of violence against a dog walker who was physically assaulted by someone riding a motorcycle. Now the Metropolitan Police, to their credit, have stepped up patrols where possible and even conducted helicopter flyovers. They have managed to stop some people, remind them of the law, seize vehicles, etc. However, these are expensive and temporary measures at best. Antisocial behaviour is not reduced solely by reactive police activity. It also needs to be tackled through working together with local authorities and communities to introduce preventative measures to help stop it happening in the first place. But this has proven difficult because Roundshaw Downs straddles the boundary of both the London boroughs of Croydon and of Sutton. For well over a year, I've attempted to get both the councils in a room with the police to thrash out a solution. Sadly, neither council has been forthcoming. I will indeed. And I associate myself with the uh, comments of the Honourable Member for Pontypreeth. I'm very sorry to hear about the Honourable Member's wedding. Now, I'm a former police officer, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I know the damage that um, uh, antisocial behaviour does. But I do want to press uh, the Honourable Member on his point about Sutton Council. I know my colleagues and Liberal Democrats on Sutton Council are working hard to stop them. If the Honourable Member is as passionate about solving this issue as he seems to be tonight, my understanding is he did refuse a briefing from the ward councillor leading on it. Wouldn't he better serve his constituents by working with with local councillors. I'm happy to correct the Honourable Lady. I was blocked from attending a meeting, that, and I was blocked by the ward councillor. Um, I, I asked for this meeting to take place, and it was actually the Liberal Democrat ward councillor that blocked me from attending. So I'm afraid she's been given incorrect information. Um, but this, actually, this proves the point that I was going on to, Mr Deputy Speaker. Only the police have bothered to engage with me properly on this, and the councils have been engaged in politicking and game-playing, and residents are suffering as a result because the Lib Dem Council is unwilling to work with the Conservative MP. Now, on that point, if you could resume your seat. Understanding orders, we have to um, adjourn the House again, and then you can resume from where you left off. I promise you, you don't have to start again. <laughs> beg to move that this house do now adjourn. The question is that this house do now adjourn. Elliot Cole, then. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Now, the police have told me that the solution to this problem is around, is about 90% of the solution to this problem is about how the vehicles get onto the downs in the first place. The two councils need to secure all entrances to the downs to prevent a vehicle from being able to access it this way. The answer isn't, as I understand the Lib Dem councillor has suggested to the police, that they act as a kind of permanent bodyguard of the Downs, stationed there 24-7. Now that obviously just isn't feasible. The issue is easily prevented, so I wonder if the government could look at what more we could do to give police powers of compulsion when partner organisations like councils are being slow or intransigent to do something that will help the police do their jobs or reduce crime. It is important, as the Downs are not the only kind of place that this antisocial behaviour is occurring. It's also prevalent in other parts of my constituency, such as St Helier, Hackbridge, the Wandle Trail, Central and Wallington Square, Beddington, Carshorton Beaches, Clockhouse and others. Can the government assure me that we are providing the police with the tools and powers necessary to deal with these criminals who are intimidating or sometimes even harming others by use of a vehicle? Mr Deputy Speaker, it isn't always possible to prevent any crime from happening but we don't have to make it easier for the criminals. Where there are solutions available, such as markings on catalytic converters or vehicle barriers on Roundshaw Downs, we should be backing our police by helping get them in place, not asking them to continue on an incredibly difficult venture unnecessarily 
unable to bring justice or give residents peace of mind. I would just like to end uh, with a plea to my constituents to please keep reporting. I understand that it can be frustrating if they feel they have done it before and not much has happened, but each report does add to the body of evidence and will make it harder for those in authority to continue turning a blind eye to the issue. I would also like to add my thanks to the Metropolitan Police for their engagement with me on these issues and the action that they have been taking where they can. The brave men and women who serve in our police deserve nothing but praise for their work. So I hope the government will join me in giving the police our backing, but help the police and residents in Carshorton and Wallington tackle these issues. Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, first of all, may I thank my honourable friend for Carshalton and Wallington for securing this important debate. Uh, I very much, I was very sorry to hear uh, of um, the cancellation or the adjournment of his wedding to his beloved Jed, uh, and I hope that the, the next time I'm responding to one of his debates that I'm able to congratulate him and Jed on their nuptials. I very much uh, sympathise with the problems he has raised on behalf of his constituents, if I may say so extremely eloquently and powerfully. Uh, the sort of behaviour he describes, and indeed we've heard across the House, uh, has a huge impact on uh, the residents that are troubled by it. And we are absolutely committed as a government to tackling this problem in all its forms and uh, in wherever it surfaces. The antisocial use of vehicles by a few people causes alarm and distress and can have a disproportionate and corrosive impact on local communities. Beauty spots like the Roundshaw Downs uh, and uh, South Beddington are to be enjoyed and cherished, not blighted by dangerous, noisy and the illegal use of motorbikes and other forms of motor vehicles. The government is also aware of increasing concerns regarding the theft of catalytic converters. We very much recognise the negative impact that this uh, can have both on members of the public and on uh, the car industry, which is why we are tackling vehicle crime as a priority. But let me uh, talk the honourable member through, if I may, my honourable friend, through some of the measures that we're taking to tackle antisocial behaviour. This government has provided the police, local authorities and other local agencies, including uh, councils uh, and uh, the various agencies, with a range of tools and powers that they can use to respond quickly and effectively to incidents of antisocial behaviour through the Antisocial Behaviour, Crime and Policing Act of 2014, which includes nuisance involving vehicles. The police also have powers under the Police Reform Act of 2002 to seize a vehicle used uh, both in a careless and inconsiderate manner on road or indeed off road. It is an operational matter for the Chief Constable and for the uh, locally elected Police and Crime Commissioner as to how this power is used. I have listened carefully to his very positive uh, observations regarding the online reporting mechanism uh, that the Metropolitan Police use, and I would encourage uh, other police forces that don't yet have this power to look carefully at this, because, of course, enabling the public to record these incidents in the way that he has described, particularly in giving them confidence that in so doing they're not uh, wasting police time or getting in the way of of more uh, urgent uh, business. That will be uh, a critical part, I think, of drawing the public's trust in how we tackle these crimes, but also helping the police to tackle uh, these crimes in local areas where appropriate. I, I see the Honourable Ladies on her feet. For giving way, and I am grateful to hear of the robust action that our department is taking to tackle the antisocial behaviour relating to vehicles. Part of the problem that my local police force tell me is that these um, unnecessary modifications to vehicles that make these loud noises are currently not illegal. Um, so, would the minister consider bring, bringing forward legislation to make these unnecessary modifications that cause antisocial behaviour illegal? Well, the Honourable Lady raises an interesting point, and I have to confess, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I am not an expert in the mechanics of cars and other vehicles, so I'm, I'm very much feeling my way in answering this. But um, the uh, Honourable Lady uh, will know that uh, we are examining, um, through the Police of Crime Sentencing 
uh, court bill, uh, we are looking at measures in the criminal justice um, system. And whilst I don't for a moment pretend that I am uh, creating government policy at the dispatch box, I would certainly uh, uh, welcome an opportunity to discuss with her, perhaps outside of the chamber, uh, the chance to discuss these sorts of uh, measures that she uh, raises. As I say, it would have to be a matter that um, uh, the car industry and others uh, have the chance to uh, contribute on, but certainly let us discuss it to see if there are ways through um, with tackling those particular problems. Um, the pandemic has brought into sharp focus just how important shared spaces and indeed nature is to community life. Local agencies can use their powers to tackle irresponsible use of these spaces, such as the Roundshaw Downs, as this kind of behaviour is both a nuisance and can present a very real danger to the public. Uh, I know, and I, I'm pleased that my honourable friend has taken the opportunity to advise his constituents to report these incidents to the neighbourhood policing team and the local authority responsible for the public lands so that they uh, understand where these problems are happening and the volume of those problems. But it, as he says, we must, uh, please, as communities, report these incidents so that the authorities can begin to use the powers that they have under existing legislation. When the problem is entrenched, it is for the local authority and community safety partnership to set a strategy and response that goes beyond reactive policing of this kind of repeat behaviour. Local agencies should know how best to approach this matter and how to deploy their powers depending on the circumstances. Home Office statutory guidance was created for local areas in order to support them to make effective use of the powers given to them. I cannot stress enough how important it is for local areas to encourage multi-agency approaches to this kind of issue to prevent it as well as deal with it as and where it surfaces. The reason these powers apply not simply to the police but also to local councils is be because we understand and recognise there has to be a whole systems approach to tackling this sort of behaviour, which is why I was disappointed to hear of the experiences he has had uh, with uh, his local council, Sutton Council. Uh, his constituents will expect, as indeed all of our constituents expect, that their elected representatives will work together to tackle antisocial behaviour. The Home Office continues to fund projects that will increase the safety of local communities. As well as increasing police funding and the recruitment of more officers, a third round of the Safer Streets Fund was launched on Thursday the 3rd of June, which brings the total amount invested into the Safer Streets Fund to £70 million over two years. And I'm going to take the opportunity, Mr Deputy Speaker, to emphasise to colleagues across the House that the third phase of the Safer Streets Fund has a particular emphasis on tackling violence against women and girls. And so I would encourage honourable members and my friends to look at that fund with their local partners, the councils, the police and so on, to see if there are fu uh, projects that they can put forward uh, in their own local area to um, tackle this and many other forms of criminal behaviour. Overall, police funding available to police and crime commissioners has increased by up to £668 million in 2021 22 And on the 4th of February this year, the government published a total police funding settlement of up to £15.8 billion in this financial year, an increase of up to £600 million compared to the previous year. We are also committed to giving the police the resources they need to tackle crime through the increasing the number of police officers by 20,000 uh, by March of 2023. I'm delighted to say that as of March, at the end of March this year, 8,771 additional officers have been recruited across England and Wales, uh, and uh, indeed that is ahead of schedule. Uh, but we will continue to, continue to recruit in order to meet our uh, target of 20,000. In the Metropolitan Police area, they had recruited an additional 1,369 officers, uh, in, and that is on top of uh, the uh, additional... Oh, sorry, and a further 1,344 officers have been allocated for the coming uh, financial year. The deployment of these officers is, of course, an operational matter for chief constables and their uh, team of senior officers, but I'm really pleased 
to hear of the admiration and the thanks that my friend has for his uh, local policing team. In terms of uh, policing the roads, we are committed to tackling vehicle crime as a priority. We are working in the Home Office with the Department for Transport and the National Police Chiefs Council on the first roads policing review, which is a thorough examination of roads policing in England and Wales. Responses to last year's roads policing review call for evidence uh, are helping shape the development of the action plan by the Roads Policing Review Governance Board. The Government planned to publish the Call for Evidence response this summer. In terms of catalytic converters, my honourable friend has raised some really important points on the theft of these uh, items. We continue to work closely with the police and motor manufacturers through the National Vehicle Crime Working Group, established by the National Police Chiefs Council, a lead for vehicle crime. We are working together to understand what more can be done to tackle the theft of catalytic converters, and this work is overseen by the Government's Crime and Justice Task Force. I join my honourable friend in congratulating our officers uh, for tackling this type of crime, and indeed he himself set out the successful Operation Basswood in March and the British Transport Police's operation in April this year. In terms of the um, use of those catalytic converters that are stolen, of course, uh, it is very much uh, uh, sits side by side uh, uh, in terms of the recent rise in metal theft. The government has funded, therefore, the setup of the National Infrastructure Crime Reduction Partnership, ensuring national coordination of policing and partner agencies to tackle metal theft. The Scrap Metal Dealers Act 2013 continues to be a powerful tool in the fight against this form of criminality. Supporting enforcement initiatives is key to the effective operation of the Act. Since the introduction of the Act, there has been a steady downward trend in metal-related thefts, with recorded offences of metal theft having decreased by 74% from the year ending March 2013 to the year ending March 2020. Uh, we carried out a review of the Act in 2017 and found it that it had been effective in addressing metal theft and should be retained. It remains a powerful tool to combat these thefts, but of course it requires consistent and effective enforcement. Some excellent nationally coordinated efforts have recently been made to encourage local authorities, law enforcement and other agencies to carry out such activities, but we must work together to ensure that all possible actions are taken to combat this crime. And so, Mr Deputy Speaker, we are uh, acutely aware of the damage and the distress that antisocial behaviour causes to law-abiding citizens. I very much hope that I have reassured my humble friend uh, that this government takes this problem uh, very seriously, including when it involves vehicles, and that we are committed to giving the police the power and resources they need to tackle this type of offending. I very much join him in thanking the police for the efforts they go to, not just in his own constituency, but across the country, to tackle these dreadful crimes and to try to ensure that all of our constituents can enjoy their homes, their neighbourhoods, in the peace and the safety that we should all deserve. The question is that this House do now adjourn. As many of them say, aye. aye. Do you know? I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. Order.